Hi there, it's Nicole here today, and I'm sharing a trifold card created from a base of watercolor cardstock, and it's going to showcase lots of cute images and dyes from Lawn Fawn. I have had this idea in my head for a while and I wanted to create this airplane scene, but I just felt like a traditional standard A2 size card wasn't going to work. So I took a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor cardstock, this is from Canson, and it's not going to be exactly A2 sized simply because the paper is only 12 inches long, but I've trimmed it so that it is five and a half inches tall and then I've scored it at four inches and at four inches again from each end and this is going to create my tri-fold card. I'm going to use a bone folder to crease those really well but this is my card base. I think if I was going to do this again I would have done my inking first because the ink is really going to gather at those seams. It doesn't bother me a ton. If it bothers you and you're going to be inking your background, go ahead and ink it first and then score your background. I'm using Distress Oxide inks to add color to this watercolor cardstock and I'm being pretty generous with this. I have sped it up simply because it's like inking three panels at once and I didn't really like how it looked the first time. But instead of cutting more cardstock and starting over, I'm a really big fan of trying to make the, pro the project you're working on work without having to throw away anything. Um, it's just, it's less waste that way. Sometimes it's inevitable and you have to, but I always try to salvage the project. So I'm being pretty generous with Broken China and Faded Jeans Distress Inks. And that's not a very good uh, seamless blend of those two inks there, so I'm going back over that, pulling up more Faded Jeans, going over the seam with the Broken China, trying to get a nicer, um, more seamless transition from one color to the other. Now I'm spritzing it with water from a Distress Sprayer, nothing new. I You've probably seen me do this a hundred times. I love using this. I love the distressed look. The great thing about the oxide inks is they're going to give that little bit of a white look, that oxidized look. And I'm hitting it with the heat tool to really showcase that. And what ended up happening was I felt like it kind of wasn't going the way I wanted. And I spritzed it with more water and that really wasn't the look that I was going for. Um, I guess if I was going for the planes flying in a um, like blackout conditions thunderstorm type of thing, that would be great, but it just wasn't what I wanted. So I'm gonna dry this really good. I'm hitting both the back and the front of this with my heat tool. And what I'm gonna do is take my inks and go back over it. And I'm going to be pretty generous. At first I tried to do it kind of lightly and that wasn't working. So I'm going to go back with Broken China and kind of cover up everything that I've already done. It's going to darken it up, but it's going to hide all of these imperfections and the mistake that I made, which is great. So again, pretty generous with my ink. I'm really putting it on there. Go back with Broken China and kind of blend that out a little bit because it's looking a little bit harsh. You can hide that and disguise it a little bit with additional water. So I'm spritzing this again with water from the Distress Sprayer because I really do want that look. And I'm just going to blot it with a paper towel and I think this looks much better. Um, and so we're going to go with that and I'm going to let it completely air dry. Now I've got some pieces of Nina's Smooth White cardstock that I'm going to die cut with some puffy cloud borders. These are also from Lawn Fawn. And I'm just gonna try to line them up. It's not gonna be perfect, but I don't want it to be a huge difference from one cloud meeting up from one panel to the next, because when you lay it out flat, you do want it to look like a seamless scene. So I'm just doing my best to kind of line it up. You will probably need to trim down some of the cardstock where the card folds. 
it does cause that little teeny tiny ridge in between each panel, but I just can't find a better way to do it where the, the card will fold and go into an envelope nicely. Uh, perhaps if you cut a long strip and scored it and then die cut it, that might be another option and something that I would try in the future. For this card, it really did not bother me that each panel was more or less created individually, if that makes sense. Um, but I think in the future, I would try to trim a 12 inch wide piece of cardstock and just simply move my die along if possible and die cut the whole border and then score it just like I did the base and go ahead and put that down. I love the look of layered clouds, so I also die cut some from vellum. And what I'm going to do is take my panels now and I'm just going to kind of line them up and I'm gonna use some post-it tape to hold them in place on a, an extended platform for the Big Shot. You need some sort of a, an extended platform probably if you're gonna be die cutting a long piece like this. I am die cutting with some of the awesome stitched trails dies. And this one is going to kind of connect one part of the greeting from plain and simple to the rest of the greeting, if that makes sense. So instead of doing any little dots or anything like this, the stitched trail is going to lead from the plain and simple to your awesome the, along the bottom edge of the card. That's the greeting I decided to go with for my card here. Now on the card base itself, I want to use some other stitched trails, the ones with the hearts. These are going to lead to the two airplanes that I'll be stamping and coloring and die cutting and adding to the background. And for those, I can just lay that flat, run that through, and I have some awesome stitched trails on the background. I think those are so super fun. Those stitched trails are really unique. Um, they're not actually going to die cut the shape. They're going to die cut that stitching line. I'm going to use the Misty to stamp my greetings on the clouds. I want to make sure that I get them stamped perfectly and if I have to stamp something more than once, that way it lines up perfectly and I don't have to worry about it. The word plain is stamped with the Lawn Fawn Peacock ink. Both of my ink choice colors here match the background of my card. These are awesome dye inks. I love them. I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Chamois to clean that up. Grab the phrase and simple. And this is going to be stamped with the Lawn Fawn Blue Jay ink. So this is going to be the darker blue of the two. And you can see that it is going to end about the spot where the stitched trail picks up and it's going to carry that all the way to the end panel, which I'll stamp stamp next with the phrase you're awesome so there's the first panel go ahead and grab the last panel because the center panel is just going to have the stitched trail detail and they just keep sticking to my fingers which is a little frustrating I think sometimes after stamps have been used once or twice they don't stick quite as bad but these I had not used before, and so they were sticking to my fingers so badly. Ink that up with the Blue Jay ink. Stamp that right there in the center. And this one I did need to stamp one on top of another to get it stamped nice and crisply. Go ahead and move that. And then there's a little open heart from the same plain and simple stamp set. And this is going to add just a tiny pop of color. This card is a lot of blues with a little touch of yellow and a little red. And I thought it would be fun to have a little heart here at the end of the greeting stamped with some jet black ink and colored with Copic markers. So here's what it looks like laid out. I'm going to go ahead and attach my cloud borders and everything along the bottom edge. And this is where you might discover that you need to trim down your panels just a little bit so that the card folds nicely. I had to pull off one of my panels and trim it down because it just was not folding. 
But again, I think if you wanted to, to try to die cut that all in one long border and then score it, I think it would work a lot better. So see, it wasn't folding very good. I pulled it off without using um, an adhesive remover and tore my background, which isn't going to show. It's absolutely fine. But I wish I would have measured it ahead of time from score line to score line. It's going to be just a little bit narrower than four inches. So I got smart for that last panel and went ahead and used an adhesive remover to pop that up and trim it down just a little bit because I was really worried I might tear up high somewhere you might see it after I did all that work salvaging that background. Get that positioned just right. Then I'm going to take the images from Plain and Simple and stamp them on some Nina Smooth White cardstock using the Jet Black ink, which is a great ink for Copic coloring or other kinds of coloring that you might be doing. I'm going to clean those stamps and then anything that I need duplicates of, I am simply going to stamp again and again, however many times I need them. I'm only going to do one flag flying from one of the planes. The other one will not have one or the banner. But I'm going to have lots of cute little clouds and lots of little hearts scattered throughout. Now the great thing about these clouds that I think is really, really fun is that there are faces included in the plain and simple stamp set and little cheeks all separate. So you can use them or not. Maybe you don't want to do quite such a cutesy style card. You can leave the faces off if you want to. I felt like they added to the overall feel of this scene simply because it is such a big scene card being 12 inches wide when it's um, completely folded out. So I'm stamping the faces with black ink and then going in with the cheeks and there's three sizes for the three clouds of both the faces and the cheeks. And for these, I'm going to stamp the cheeks with some Ballet Slippers Lawn Fawn ink. And this is a newer pink ink from Lawn Fawn. It is the perfect baby pink color or rosy cheek color in this case. You'll see here when I ink these up and stamp it, they are, it's just a fantastic pink color. Sometimes I think pink can be a little hard to get a great pink color. And I really love the Ballet Slippers from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to simply clean my stamp in between each image, line them back up, stamp them again. I'm going to have to do that three times for all of them. And then I'm going to start coloring in all of my images, including that little heart on the bottom of the card by the, gre by the greeting. Then I'm going to do all of my red coloring first with R24 and R29 for all of the hearts. So these three little hearts together and the little heart at the bottom of the card are colored with these colors. Then I'm going to outline the clouds with BG10, blend, but just really lightly. Blend it again very lightly with BG0000 and then smooth any of that out with a colorless blender because I don't really want to color in the whole cloud. I just want to give the edges a little definition and a little color. I will do this for all nine of the clouds. And that colorless blender really just kind of smooths the edge. It doesn't blend anything or remove any color. For the banner, I'm using B. 63, 66, and 69. This is an awesome, almost violet kind of color. It's a blue violet, I guess I would call it. Um, I love this color combination and I think it looks nice against the background of the card. Really kind of reminds me of the faded jeans color blending in to Broken China. That transition area in the background, I think it matches that. The yellow combination I'm using for the airplanes is YR0000 and YR31. I'll use that in a couple places. Both planes are colored with the same combination of markers, just the different areas of the planes are colored different 
to make them look a little bit different on the background. B00 and B14 is this color combination. Get a nice blend here. I went over it a couple times. And then again, the B63, 66, and 69 will be used for that blue violet color. Anything that's gray on the airplanes will be C5 and C7, and I think that's just the tire. The insides of the wheels is going to be a blue color on both airplanes. But really so much fun to color. I just love these images. Lots of great ways to use this plain and simple stamp set. So here's the second airplane. The body of this plane is going to be B00 and B14. And then the front and the back will be the B63, 66, and 69. And the wings and things like that are going to be YR0000 and YR31. Once I have my images completely colored, I'm going to take the coordinating plain and simple dies and die cut all of the images. The awesome thing about the banner and the airplane is it's going to cut out the little area, the little triangle there for the banner and that little area underneath the roof of the plane so that it just, I like that. I think it looks so nice so it's not a bunch of white space. I'm going to attach my images with some glue dots throughout the design. I laid out everything to give myself an idea of where I wanted it to go. Some things may move in the final card, but pretty much this is how it is. These little hearts are going to just kind of be all along that stitched trail. And then the little clouds with faces all the way across. I think that just really helps solidify the design with these repeating clouds. The banner for the airplane can be customized. There are several greetings that you can use with that depending on what kind of card you're making. There's the you're the best that I used. Happy birthday, thanks, and congrats. And then you could see how the, the card closes and opens just by um, unfolding it. So much fun. I really li love this. I think it's great. If you want to do a large scene, this is such an easy way to do it. No special dies or anything is needed. Finishing touches are next with some glossy accents for the hearts. And I'm also going to do a little bit of glossy accents on the wheels of the planes and maybe the propeller too. A black glaze pin for the eyes on all of the clouds. I flipped it around so I wouldn't get my hand on the glossy accents while it was drying. And then I'm going to take glossy accents and add just little dabs of it all over and take some pretty pink posh iridescent star confetti and attach it all over the card for that fun iridescent look. Thanks for joining me today for this tri-fold card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.